Hi guys, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I cut these bow tie inlays using a band object that we're going to create. And then secondly, I will show you how we do the actual inlays. Let's get started. When it comes to woodworking, there are two primary reasons to use this bow tie joinery. Uh, the first one being structural support. If you're working with live edge slabs or large white planks of wood in general, cracks tend to be a natural part of the process. It's just how wood works. Uh, and so to prevent the crack from splitting a little bit further, you can inlay this bow tie in there and because it kind of flares out, that flare actually prevents the wood from splitting it further outward. The second reason is aesthetics. Uh, so I don't know about you, but I absolutely love the way these bow ties look. Although I will say they don't necessarily have to look like this. They can be uh, cut at a different angle. They can be bigger, smaller. Uh, they can be narrower. Uh, they can also be, of course, a completely different species. Speaking of, more often than not, you'll see people use contrasting species of wood relative to the workpiece. And the reason people do that is to highlight uh, the bow ties from the workpiece so that it kind of pops out. So that's the second reason. Um, anyway, so today I'm going to be probably using the words bow tie, Dutchman, butterfly inlays interchangeably because uh, that's kind of how my mind works, but that's also how everybody calls them. Uh, so um, let's, get, let's get on the benza and then I'll show you how we make the jig. Okay, so this is what the finished jig looks like. I wanted to show it to you first so that you have a pretty good visual anchor of what it is that we're building in the, in the build process that'll come next. Uh, this is a very simple jig because it really has just a couple of pieces. You know, we've got a miter here that goes into the miter slot. Make sure it's, it fits nice and snug so there's zero play here. Um, it's a piece of plywood. You know, the size doesn't really matter. Uh, the fence here doesn't serve any major function other than you can use your fingers and you can apply forces on the fence as opposed to just the surface where you can slip and, and potentially cause an injury. Ultimately, uh, the business end of this jig is right here. These two pieces of wood provide the angle that we want to cut our bow tie into, and then the back piece provides support as we're cutting into the material. So you take a piece of wood like so, and again, this provides us the angle, this provides the back support, you push into the cut, and then you can flip it over, you push into the cut again, and then you flip it in the other way, and you make your cuts like so, and that gives you the final bow tie. Now that you know what the jig looks like, let me show you how I made it. By the way, none of this is critical. It's I'm just putting it because then it's better in line with my bandsaw, but as long as you have a runner and it's kind of perpendicular, that's fine. You don't really have to worry too much about the placement of that runner. Okay, so now that we have our miter bar inserted and we can glide this nice and easy, we need to add a fence over here and then make a pass through the bandsaw. So I'm gonna add a little fence over here. So 
So now we have a fence that we can use. This is not necessarily going to guide us in any way, but it's really just so that you can put your hand and push the workpiece into. It adds a little bit of safety, especially because there's a little bit of friction on this. Uh, even though it glides smoothly, you still want something else to hold on to so that your hand doesn't fly into the blade. Um, with that being said, uh, we're going to take a pass with the bandsaw and then just kind of come pretty close to the end of this fence, not necessarily all the way in. And then we're going to use that line as a reference for uh, the little bit of fixture that we're going to put on top here to cut our Dutchman. So with the cut being made, now we know exactly what our kerf of the bandsaw blade is going to be. We can use this as a straight line to be able to gauge at what angle we're going to position the piece to cut the Dutchman. But before we put on the fixture here, let's first cut a couple of pieces of wood that we want to use as our bow ties. And then we can come back here to get a visual perspective before we kind of uh, provide the guides. So when it comes to the actual bow ties, the size will depend on your aesthetic preference or the size of the piece that you're working with. In my case, I'm going to cut the bow ties to be about an inch wide or so and roughly two and a half inches long. So once you've cut your rectangular pieces that will become your bow ties, it's really important to get a very, very accurate measure of the length of these pieces. And in my case, it's 2.3 inches. So the center of that, which is where the angular cuts of the bow tie are going to meet, is going to be 1.15 inches. So I'm going to use a caliper because it gives us the most accurate reading and using and that as a guide, I'm going to just kind of make a tiny little mark and then using a square, we can make our center line. So you want to do this for all of your pieces. With the center line made, you know exactly how far you need to come into the cut that's going to meet from both sides into the middle. So back at the bandsaw and with our uh, piece that we want to cut into the bow tie, we can kind of see that, you know, we need to position it here along some specified angle of our interest. And then we need to basically cut through into the middle and then we'll flip it over and then hopefully cut it at that same angle and bring it uh, to the middle of the cut. So that means we need a guide to kind of help us as a reference for that particular angle of our choosing. And at the same time, we also want a stop in the back. Now, bow ties can be different in sizes and angles. Uh, you can really do anything you want with them for the most part. And in our case, I want to use these little pieces of wood as a guide, but I also don't want it to be permanent. So I don't want to use CA glue because I may change the size and angle of my bow ties. And so as a result, I want to create these guides such that they're done with double-sided tape and then they're repositionable at a later time when I need to batch out a bunch more bow ties for a different project. So this is what the final cut piece looks like. And you can see that the center line really is our guiding source here. That's kind of what helps us make sure that we uh, come in and stop very close to the edge 
of that uh, pencil line and then kind of cut from the other side again. And that leaves this little bit of a nudge here and that can be easily cleaned up with a chisel. Ultimately, I'm very happy with the shape and size of this particular bow tie. But again, you know, they vary by the requirements of your project and your aesthetic taste. All right, so we have our bow tie made, right? Uh, and we've got this crack on this piece of wood uh, and we want to obviously use the bow tie to reinforce that crack so that it prevents it from spreading out any further. So you can position the bow tie any way that you want. I typically use the center line and just kind of sight down it and then usually uh, follow the line of the crack. It doesn't always mean that this is going to be in parallel with the edge or whatever workpiece that you're working with, but it does kind of add a slight asymmetric touch that I think is a little bit more organic uh, and feels less manufactured. So once you have the positioning determined, you do need to find a way to temporarily fix this down to the wood so that we can scribe a knife line around the perimeter of the bow ties. And we do this because we need to chisel or route out the uh, material so that this can be driven into that hollow uh, space. But we need to know where our perimeters are. So I'm going to use a double-sided tape here. Uh, again, I'm sure you're discovering how useful this double-sided tape can be. I trimmed off a little bit of the excess uh, that kind of came around the edges. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna use a double-sided tape. And again, find our position. Let's say that's good right there. Perfect, now this is kind of nice and secure. Once you have this position, I like to actually create a tiny little mark to indicate an arrow, uh, and then just indicate that this is the top, because once you take it off, it's kind of hard to know which is the top and which way they're orienting, especially if you don't have a perfectly symmetrical bow tie, uh, it's gonna help you out in the long run. And then uh, here, I'll put the arrow, so then I know the arrow is pointing here and they correspond and this is the top. Now we want to use a marking knife to scribe around the perimeter. Unfortunately, I can't find my marking knife, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use a utility knife here. You wanna make nice and light passes early on. You can always come back and do a heavier pass, but you don't want the knife to wander around too much on the first pass, which can happen if you try to take too much of a bite. Again, it's best to use a actual proper marking knife because it has a flat back and you can use that flat back as a reference against you know the edges of the bow tie but you work with what you got and these lines actually are going to be perfect for when we finish hogging the material the rough material with a router and that's the line that we're going to drive the chisel down with uh, so this is actually very very critical So now that we're done, oh man, all right. We can remove the tape. It's really in there. My goodness, okay. So it's a little harder to see these lines than you would on camera than it is in person, but I'm going to drive the chisel in here on the line and just kind of tap it gently. So we get a stronger, more visible line for you guys. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see this a little bit better now. Um, and you know, of course we have the little mark, check mark here on top and we know that this is the orientation our bow tie is gonna go into. In my opinion, the best way to hog this material is going to be by using a router. And then we can come in with a chisel and clean out all of the perimeters to make sure that we have a really nice and tight fit for the bow ties. As far as the router bit goes, I'm using a quarter inch spiral upcut bit. 
Um, I find this router bit to be extremely handy in, in a variety of tasks across the uh, wood shop. And I'll leave a link in the description below for those of you who are interested. But honestly, you should be able to find it anywhere where you would buy any of these types of tools. Um, I like this bit because you can plunge it right down into the material and it has a really good chip extraction ability so that not a lot of the chips that have been cut are hanging out at the bottom that can kind of cause friction and heat buildup. And this does a really good job of ejecting them outward. Uh, so let's get to the actual work piece and let's hog out that material. So for the depth stop of the router bit, we want to kind of leave it just a little shy of the actual height of the uh, bow tie because we want to be able to have a little reveal at top that we can send or uh, you know f uh, kind of plane to flush. So with the rough cutting of the router, this is what it looks like. Uh, you can tell that there's still a little bit of, uh, you know, that line that we created that's left over. In some cases, I got super close to that edge. Uh, that's because I like to route a little dangerously sometimes. Don't do that, by the way. Don't get that close to the edge. You can always chisel this to, to, to finish. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a chisel and then we're gonna kind of like go right into that line that we created and then drive that all the way down. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is, if you notice these little corners right here, those are going to have to be chiseled all the way completely. So that's going to take the bulk of our time, and then we're going to clean up the edges, and then everything should be pretty ready for us to drive uh, the bow tie into. So once you've done all of the chiseling, you know, you drove it down against the marking line that you had, as well as cleaning up all the corners, this should be ready. Uh, you should be able to put this in here and drive it home. But before we do that, I'm gonna chamfer the edges here so that there's, there's a little bit less resistance when we're trying to drive this. Be careful when you're trying to chisel, you know, in the direction of your flush. If it can cut wood like this, it can definitely cut your flush. And now you can see it'll kind of like go in a little easier without too much of a hassle, just because these are a little rounded. I'm just gonna pour some down at the bottom. I'm just kind of spread that around a little bit. All right, again, we wanna make sure that our arrow is pointing this way. Bring it in, and we can drive this bad boy home. Just go easy, make sure it's guided in nicely. You know, see, now I've made sure that it's aligned properly before it goes in, and then you can kind of drive the rest of it. It helps if you hit side to side so that you even out the depth, otherwise you create an angle that it doesn't want to go down into. So, left and right. Conversely, what you can do is you can bring like a piece of scrap wood, so you can evenly distribute the pressure and then drive it like that. Uh, and then I'm gonna use this rag to just kind of clean up a little bit of the glue on the side. You don't need that extra glue. And one of the tricks that I'm gonna show you here that I find to be very useful is to actually sand this right while the glue is still a little wet because what's gonna happen is it's going to sand this material down and any of the tiny little imperfections that you may have on the joints, it's actually going to create a sawdust of this material 
and then uh, fill that in. So it's gonna look nice and clean when it's all said and done. So this is what our finished product looks like. I'm going to apply a little bit of oil so you can kind of see the color distinction between the pieces. Now you can really truly tell the difference. And you can tell like it's a pretty good fit. And part of the reason why it's a good fit is because we sanded it while we were uh, still with wet glue. And uh, that kind of helps mix and fill in all of the voids. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video or learned something from it. And if you did, please click the like button below and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for your support and for watching, and I will see you on the next one.